think that's what I there's the, that mechanism whatever's happening there whatever nature is up to it's like that's what's the the magnetism in the art is like running on that you know this thing of like come onto this bridge human you with the spray mm. can like just this intuitive like tractor beam you know to, to just go do some civil disobedience and, and make I, I bet you all those anybody that goes back and sees it is probably really psyched that uh, more is added I always get pretty psyched yeah especially your pencil is like getting really it's just growing oh that one's cool <laughs> yeah that one's really cool <laughs> that's really amazing that one is coming along as I find the material too which is great like the, the erasers got added yeah, it's just taking a lot of dimension. Yeah. That should be like a public mural, you know, a public should, works mural. Yeah. Yeah. That's also, I, I want to try to articulate that in a statement. I don't know how to, you know, just how to, how to yeah, say it in that, like, there's some sort of, like, magnetism or, or life to art where I've definitely noticed it with the stuff on the street where I'll just find something, ooh, that's a nice spot, I will add to it. Or I'll do something and then somebody else will like do something a quick scrawl or another mural or uh, stickers I've had people somebody super glued a snail shell beneath something I did and like other little like forced things and it's like I mean I wound up there so it's not it is like coincidental but it just seems like all of a sudden like something happens in that like geography if you add some like beauty, like it just kind of like, like wants more, or, like, you know, wants more color or something. And, and it's just like the artists go there. It's like you've invested it with some power that it attracts people. Yeah. But then we start talking about that stuff and it kind of makes me think like, oh boy, <laughs> I like thinking about those things, but you know, power and the woo woo ness and magic and that's another one like you know you got to get a little get a little they say mm -hmm. uh -huh, there's always a cost and all that stuff and i don't really know anything about it so yeah i did go over those um remember those things that were in the corners mm -hmm. the tree of life the tree of life yeah just because like i don't know really what they are so oh they're still there yeah you know they're <laughs> <laughs> i think where we left off it was december yeah, yeah, it's the second Saturday in December. So that will come together somehow. But it's some sort of door made out of like bones and organs and a da like a Taoist poem that I wrote a long time ago. I'm doing a lot of Dremel work with it. What prompted this? Um, well, let's try to figure out what do I want to do. So I've had these ones going for a little bit now. I picked up some pretty good wood from a construction gig I did. So I wanted to use it. And I don't know, I was going to do like a carve out like a sword and a chicken wing and a pencil and just this kind of thing I do a lot. And then I got this idea of like a puzzle, like make it so it can come apart. And I guess it came to be because I was thinking like, you know, flesh. Kind of like a, it's like the, the uh, fleshiness of the, the, the meat of the human or something like. It's like something coming into being here in the middle. Right. It's kind of supposed to have like this... Uh, elemental thing I was going for like like water but not liquid so like solid water you know and you got earth but it's kind of like a like that the old man beard like the usnia it's kind of something that like I don't think any of us really know what the heck is going on there but we can pontificate maybe and reach for ideas but it does seem to be some sort of like maybe a extraterrestrial you know, just like the mushroom life cycle itself and the, the kingdom of fungi, it's kind of like left field as compared to like the other things, you know, it's like a more animal than it is plant, but it resembles a plant kind of. Um, I think that's what led like Terrence McKenna to think that they, it was like a consciousness from another solar system or, yeah, you know, 
And to have that, how else can you have that vision to actually enter another consciousness? I mean, there's no other way to do it that other than like psilocybin is one of the only ways to do it. Right. Which is a tryptamine, which I find interesting is like the psilocybin like produced this organic analog of, you know, uh, something that will fit into a receptor that we already have, mm. you know, like that. I think DMT a lot of and mammals, yeah. And bimethyltryptamine and right psilocybin <coughs> so it's almost like a you can see it as like a chemical but maybe it's it's like a something more like information we're, we're getting into that where it's like it's like a key or something i think that getting psyched about mushrooms is why i started thinking about doors hmm. kind of like the you know the doors of perception and Huxley. yeah and that that whole thing of like using it using them to that experience and the the substance to like unlock unlock yeah not just to kind of like fuck off and have fun and or party or get wasted or whatever because i don't really think the tryptamines are good for that <laughs> not really yeah they're not it's kind of a waste when you do that yeah i mean i think i made that mistake and it didn't really work right so this one flips. This is, this is this is pretty cool so far. Do you think uh, snakes have something to do with the message too? Yeah, that's a lot of these pieces that I'm working on. They have like a very basic, like esoteric, like concepts that just kind of come out of me, and then I'll come across it later, like in a book, and I'll be like, oh, well, that painting I did, or that doodle um like this thing that i forgot what that's called but uh does that correspond to the tree of life yeah yeah and there's um you know this one the tree of life it says uh it's like some sort of map or um yeah i've only i've never understood it beyond like it being correspondences but it looks like it's hebraic yeah this one there was a. Uh, there's other ones on the other reverse side, but they're glued down. But, uh, yeah, this one looks like Old Testament or something. Like it says, uh, formative world, splendor, practice, victory, kind of philosophy, strength and mercy. So it kind of has this duality to it on the, the two, like, columns that are mm -hmm. on the middle. And it kind of seems like there's options, right? <laughs> there's something here like baseball with options. Have you ever meditated on things like that? Or that type of diagram? Um, just through art. You know, I'm, uh -huh. pretty, I'm a pretty uh, uh, low ambition as far as like spirituality and those kind of things go. I kind of like pick up books and research it or when I'm like interested in it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of won't, won't do it if uh, it doesn't grab me. So, yeah, I kind of like very lazily like we'll like skim through some Aleister Crowley or something to try to find an answer I try to push the boundaries. I try to make it uh, very clear, as clear as possible as the image that I have in my head or the perception that I'm looking for. And then I just try to push the boundary of saying that it's messed up or, or like trying to walk away from it. But it's, I don't. I can't walk away from it because once I put it on there, it's like it becomes what I wanted it to be. 
Yeah, it's hard to escape it. Like it's somebody, creator. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't look at it like I look at it like is if the paint is on the on the canvas, then it's it's, it's just how it's supposed to be. Yeah, I don't believe in a messed up painting. Like if I messed up, I don't I don't look at it like people like oh I messed up and threw it away. I don't look at that. I look like it's an opportunity to create a uh, to it's like solving a puzzle. It's like what would it take to make this turn into something else? So where did you get that idea? I just <laughs> it just came to me. Yeah, it just came to me. a lot of people would give up yeah not me i just keep going until i find something i'll even walk away from it it's like solving a problem like solving a mystery you know what does this painting want to be what does it want to become so it could be if the painting is more messed up it's better yeah i don't look at it as messed up i don't look at it i was like it's just opportunity yeah exactly Exactly. I, I find it fascinating. It's intriguing to me. I, like, I love it. Maybe it's good you stumbled into this. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, I really like it. It's kind of like the right opportunity. Yeah, it, it just happened. I mean, I was here and they, they had the materials and she was like, have at it. And I was kind of timid at first. And then once I started going, I was, hey, let me put this or let me try that or let me try this over here. And this came out. I think it was like jazz. Exactly. Yeah, Cause exactly. Because like, like exactly. I think John Coltrane said, you never play. There's never a mistake. You just repeat the mistake. Exactly. I'm yeah, I'm a big jazz fan, so oh, you are. yeah, that really is home. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably where I got it from, to be honest with you. Yeah. What would you listen to while you're painting? Uh, I listen to like happy jams or whatever. And after a while, um, because it's so quiet here and everybody's doing something different. I, I stopped listening to music and it's just in my head. I just, cause I don't play an instrument, so the pain is like my instrument. Oh yeah. Like make that Yeah, rhythm. like a rhythm? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so you got that innate talent. I could be nice. Or it's speaking to yeah. you. Yeah, it is. I, You know what, it happens to me all the time. Like if I do a painting and it's like I really struggle with what the painting wants to be, I like try to let the painting become what it wants to become instead of trying to force it, of making it what I want it to be. So how do you learn how to do that? I don't know, I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how I think, I don't know. I can't not, explain it. Not to be devil's advocate, yeah. but that's kind of like what it's all about, really. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I have fun doing it. It's, it's like I have a passion for it, it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah, I don't get like um, like a block. I just uh -huh. I'll start out with something. Like I get an image, and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. and then it might not even be the image at all. Plus, I start, it might turn to something completely different. See, that's kind of like the fountain of creativity because a lot of people get blocks. Mm -hmm. I don't even get that. It's just that if I run out of materials, uh -huh. <laughs> I have to stop. You know. So, what if you really didn't have any material? What would you do? I don't know. I'll, I'll probably start tinkering with the paintings that I already did. I'll go back to them and like, maybe if I add this or maybe if I put this in there, maybe, you know, I want to mess with that. I got a new idea for that one. So I'll probably just start painting all my paintings all over again. And it becomes something else. Like this one did, the one with the circle. That was, her, that was something different. This was something different. A couple of them were something different to start out with. So what do, you, what do you see when it tells you to take it on a new direction? What do you, what's happening? Uh, 
a color might catch my attention or um an idea might pop in as I'm as I'm going. Like if it's already done, I'm like, man, man, if I did this or added another color or put a swirl here or you know, just something you know, something different to it makes it stand out more, just to make it pop more. That's what I like. I like the attention, the attraction. Like why I want people to question. Like why is this? Why is that like that? Or why did he put that there? Or that doesn't belong there. I want to take that off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's odd to me. I don't you know not to me personally, but people that are looking at it, like why is that there? Oh really? Yeah. So you people... really are kind of getting into their heads. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Make it more intri intricate. Yeah, that bridge painting is something. That's something that I, I I looked at a photograph because it was like I want to challenge myself. Yeah. You know, I was like I never painted a bridge for. Let's let's try to paint a bridge. Can I get this in here? See, I don't look at it like that. I look like if it's slime work, and then I was like, okay, maybe I'll try something different, or I'll add this, or add that. I like how you got this. Like the gray in the background, but then the the black is so sharp because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the rest is kind of like muted. Mm -hmm. But the black is looks like it's wrought out of iron or something. Yeah, the the black I wanted to stand out because that's the the image I wanted to portray. I wanted the focus to be on the bridge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's like more like tell me a story. For me, it's like a story because I can once I'm painting, I could stop and just be like, this is done. I could say when it's complete. You know, I have, I, I just know when it's done. It's like, okay, I can't really do any more to it, so it's done. Is the bridge finished? Yeah. That one is like, uh, it's kind of like, it started off, I was going to make it into a waterfall, but then I wanted it to be like full of life, like different, like, um, what is the word I want to use? Like aura? It's like a river of aura, like a river of life. That's what you want to portray. Mm -hmm. That ain't easy. I don't. <laughs> I guess I just thought of it and tried it. You know, that was the whole thought process when I was doing it. With your blessing. I don't know. I like a blank canvas. I just like the the freedom of creativity. I think. Like if I get a project or something, I want the. I don't want to be like contained to anything. I like what I call it is controlled chaos. You know, I want it to be in this space, but just whatever in that space, and to like help bring it into like um, a format. If that makes sense. I think that's why you uh, do like the wet on wet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's something about it that's a little more, it's kind of like chaos because it's going to blend in ways you can't expect. Exactly. You have no control over it. I mean, you yeah. think you can have control, but it's like, it's like, a, it's like a compromise. Yeah, because if it was easy, you wouldn't do it, right? I mean, you, you have to have that challenge to... Yeah, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge, but I'm, I'm up for it. I love the challenge of it. I love that, that thought of the challenge. You know, uh, I like I like interaction with people. I like, I'm a people person. Yeah, I don't look at people differently. I don't look at myself as being up here and people lower than me or me being lower than anybody else. I look at it as all as equal. Kind of across the board. Battle. Exactly, exactly. And some people know how to, how to do things and some people don't, but I believe like everybody could be taught something, like their own skills or their own gifts. I think everybody has a talent. They just have to Thank you. Guys. Find it. It's so amazing, like the uh, how much inherent, like skill or knowledge is kind of just like in us like it's uh, and it just needs to be worked out or there's a saying like and I flip the I flip that idea around in my head like a raccoon flips over a wet rock <laughs> oh really and it's like the raccoons like 
they got these hands that they almost have thumbs, right? And they're very like water or aquatic and they douse their food and but it's almost like they're this 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 thing that has these hands now. And um it's like they can flip that rock over <laughs> and like get it wet and it's a different color, you know, it's like probably so much fun. I just started doing elephants. Hmm. See, I don't even know how to do this one yet. There it is. This one happened in a weird way where I was just, uh, I think I was trying to get this owl out first. So I cut that shape and, um, I don't know, I just really started to get into like, Whatever that is, just the freaking body of the wood. It's awesome to shape it and everything. I've never done it before. And so I think I next want to like get this guy out. I had to make certain cuts with the jigsaw and it just all kind of became a mess that I sanded down and made it soft to the touch and it kind of worked out. It was like a mistake. I thought I was gonna lose this piece. It's interesting how wood continues to retain that energy Yes. Even though it's kind of dried out, it's still alive. Right. And then you're kind of like your uh, DNA strands over there. Oh yeah, I forgot woven I together. On that one. Yeah. That's pretty intense. I definitely have like a what is it, a motif or just some sort of character that the serpent is you know, this. Yeah, it's like uh, Kundalini to me. Yeah, that's what kind of like this one is too, like the you know, breaking of the egg and coiled snake and DNA, you know. Uh, but, but with this one's cool because it has the one side is just pure snake, the other one's like kind of metamorphosizing from like you know jawbone to worm to octopus to. I want to change that into a tusk before I finish it. At the very end. It always goes back to the organic. Yeah. Organic life forms. The spirit of things. The spirit of humans, human spirit. Um, I mean, I definitely put owls in there a lot. A lot of my drawings. A lot of snakes. Cats are really cool because they're kind of like. I don't know, there's a cool apex predator. It's like a becoming. <laughs> I was thinking of that. Try and find something, become something in which I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's Ooh, that's sticky awesome. Still. I'm gonna try to put this paint in everything. Is that a new find? Yeah. yeah. Does that look okay? You reminded me when you talked about like the wheel of emotions. Yeah how they move from one to the next. See, that remind me, I, I probably said remind me of like, uh, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy where you try to separate thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. But you also talked about perception on top of that. So thoughts, feelings, and perception. Yeah, so of, how do you... Uh, of thoughts and feelings, or is this outward? Well, it seems like your perception feeds your art a lot, the way you perceive the world. Yeah. It's like a... A digestion or something you know like a composting or some sort of like decomposition of like things that kind of take in the world process it and then spit it back out usually creatively I would say that's how you describe art well I understand like it's either like yeah it's like where are we centered at or the core it's either like kind of it's like like coming in and going back out or like the other way. I'm not really sure how to articulate that. Well, I guess like uh, I'm more grounded in my internal world, I would say, than the ex external world, as in rumor or uh, 
I'm very skeptical. So it's kind of like, the, the, like what, what's presented to me, I'm going to have to like use something to like let it sit in my, like on the inside. So it's kind of like I, I consume it and then spit it back out. I guess the other way would be, it's so alien to me. Uh, I guess pr produce it and then see the response. Uh, just you know, wing it or do it or some whatever this it is. Like I, I kind of digest something and then like kind of spit it back out and then it happens all the time. Like people are just like, "What the hell is this?" You know, it's a little too weird. And I think it takes a certain bit of like agility, mental agility, or something, or be able to hold your breath for a long time, like in weird ideas and. Uh, perception. I mean, I just like kind of study things and surf the internet and then it kind of all eventually comes out in this uncanny way that I don't plan. So it composts in your mind. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I finish it at all. Like, I mean, this one specifically, it just... It was a scrap piece of wood, like I said before. I was measuring out a stencil, so that's why the window pane is in there. But I'm now I see to. it more as like um, these axi or axes, where you have like you're up and down, uh, back and forth, and then like that width is kind of coming through, like through right there, and just the same like over here. So you have like three or maybe even four. This is um, that's the Fibonacci curve. Is that what that is? Uh, not not exact. It's just kind of did one of those oh. to start it after the window. This is lifting off into an infinity, or throughout the cosmos. Yeah, and that's how it okay. came to be though, because I I didn't know where this was going. That planet was originally a yolk, like a hard boiled egg kind of yolk color all the way through. And I don't even think the spiral kind of continued, but I do like the fact that it like, you can imagine it as like endless, like no beginning or no end, but then it breaks off over there. So there's kind of like a break, like an end, and a beginning again. And, but your mind can just imagine the infinity of that spiral. But when you're the artist, there's no like cash and register system. You just have to keep track of what you're getting and what you're giving. And you know, sometimes it gets, the till gets out of balance. Yeah. Well, there's there's something that like like there's something to be said about beauty. Like when I when I like uh, this wasn't I didn't like these at first, or especially this one. But I'm like loving this one right now. This one's so good. The way that paint came out and just the different shades of black and I'm trying to like etch a bear out of it more so than like a cat or thing. Um, it's actually this way, isn't it? The other way here. And uh, yeah. You know, I'm getting these ideas, and it's all being, it's like being uh, sparked by beauty, because it's just like, I recognize it as like, yes, I did it. Or not even me, it's just like, it, it is, it is. Like, and uh, while I'm doing it, it's very exciting, and just kind of, uh, ideas are coming to me, like what the next step is.
that's fine. Yeah. I'll probably just add a couple more coats of the black stuff. Well, it also goes back to one thing you said about um, when you th when you equate the art to money, then you lose the inspiration. Yeah. Right now you're just creating, but if you think about the value, that kind of rocks your whole world. You can't create. It's weird, yeah, because I, I begin to think about like what people want instead of like what is coming out of me, and um, whatever is coming out of me is kind of like that uh, food for the starving artist or whatever the starving artist eats off of. It's a good, it's a good feeling. It's like creating, you know, like creating original ideas or. Um, it just sometimes feels like there's a there is a becoming like there's somebody that's not me inside me, you know that's uh, knows where the, the art is going, and I I've learned to trust it. I forget to trust it often, but the money thing makes me just think about set, yeah selling things and being successful I guess, which is a good feeling. But it's kind of weird not getting graded. I'm so used to just like. The thing is due, and it's gonna affect your grade. <laughs> <laughs> and now, like, it's, this is just a kind of commission or just a display. So there's no real like pressure, but there still is too.